Hello there, YouTube solar fans. Welcome to my garage and a tour of my Harbor Freight powered solar power system. Let's take a closer look. So what we have here are three arrays, each of which is composed of six 100 watt Harbor Freight solar panels for a total of 18 panels or 1800 watts of generating capability nominally. Plus, I have this standalone 310 watt panel that my neighbor gave me. It was a leftover from his much larger solar installation. So adding the 300 watts to the 1800 watts, we have basically a nominal 2100 watt generating capability here. Okay, so here is the heart of the system is this power cart. Uh, I'm using this red cart from Harbor Freight. Cost me, I think, 70 bucks. It holds eight lithium iron phosphate batteries that are each 100 amp hour, 12 volt. Uh, 1,280 watt hours, so eight of these combined uh, totals 10 kilowatt hours of storage. And then I have uh, this inverter, which is a 3,000 watt inverter, although I don't expect to go that high, and I haven't yet. Um, and I have this 500 amp battery monitor. But this is the cart that can be used standalone to provide power overnight to the essential systems in our house, which is the refrigerators, the freezer, the furnace, and the aquariums. Uh, because I had a power failure years ago where the aquariums were, uh, the filters and air pumps weren't working and the fish died in less than a day. So <laughs> uh, I consider those essential and uh, that's an overview of that. Okay, so here's a quick overview of the controller board. I have four Renogy rovers that are each 40 amp MPPT charge controllers. They're all identical. Uh, within this series of controller, the 40 amp version was the best value in terms of dollars per amp. Um, each controller is connected to an array. Uh, each one of these arrays with six panels, each of those panels is rated at 6.2 amps. So six of those is going to be 37 amps. It actually turns out it puts out a little more than that, which is a good thing. But I get about 38, 39 amps out of each one of these arrays which is a nice fit for these 40 amp controllers. Okay, so this board just slips over the side of the cart um, by means of those wooden hooks, I guess you could call them, uh, on each of those two shelves. And so it sits like that. And then you can connect uh, these cables together, which again, I will do, actually, I won't do that right now because this is just kind of a show and tell. Um, so when those are connected and you turn on this switch, it supplies battery power to the charge controllers. Then when you hook up the solar panels to those cables, you can turn on power, solar panel power to the charge controllers. So um, that way uh, you don't accidentally, and I numbered them so, so that the sequence of switch operation would be clear. You power up the charge controllers first with switch number three, and then you 
power on or connect the solar panels with switches number four and five. So that's that. And it all works pretty well. Okay, so here in the garage, I have the three solar panel arrays stashed away. And there are three of them standing on end. And they're each the width of a two by four. And they each have three casters on the bottom. So the idea is that these solar panel arrays are portable or at least movable. They weigh about 150 pounds each. So let's take them out and see how they work. Okay, that's good. Thanks, guys. And here's the generator port, which I have plugged the solar power cart into now. Um, it is only providing 120 volts. The generator actually produces 240 volts and powers the whole house, including the air conditioner. To use that in this port, I had to get this kind of special adapter from a company called AC Works. Uh, there it is. They sell a bunch of specialized adapters and connectors. This takes it from the regular 110, 120 volt um, outlet on my inverter to the specialized 240 volt interface on this. So um, that's cool. It all works well. Okay, so to use generator power or solar power, I have to disconnect from the grid so that I don't feed power back into the grid. And to do that, I have to throw this main breaker here that cuts us off from the grid. And I can slide this interlock up and turn on the generator port. So these breakers um, connect the generator port uh, to the rest of the system. So it uh, is impossible for me to connect to the grid and to my generator at the same time. So it's a pretty clever setup. When I connect a generator, I don't have to flip off any of these other breakers. I know I've seen people, they go through, they just turn on essential things, but I don't have to. The generator runs my whole house, except not the dryer at the same time as the microwave. For solar power, I do turn off this dryer circuit breakers because... Uh, uh, the solar does not provide 240 volts the way I have it set up. Okay, so here we have the solar arrays out and providing the power to the house right now. Um, they're all connected up. They're all generating. Let's go see what the charge controllers are doing. Hello, Sandy. Okay, so here's the power cart in my garage. And each of the four charge controllers is connected to one of the solar arrays out there. At the moment, this one is pulling in 36 amps. This one's pulling in about 38 and a half amps. This one's pulling in about 23 amps and this one, which is the standalone 300 watt panel, is pulling in about 17 amps. So my house has been running on this system for the last few hours. This is the inverter. It shows that it is currently providing about 660 watts to the house. And Here's the battery monitor, which says that it's providing about 700 watts and that we have about 761 amp hours 
in the battery right now. So the battery is charging right now because we see the voltage down there at the bottom is 13 and a half volts. Plus, we're adding 52 amps to it, uh, along with taking out that 700 watts. So we're still providing net inflow into the batteries, even though the house is uh, consuming right now about six or 700 watts. And that is the two refrigerators, the freezer, and the aquariums with their filters and air bubblers. That's pretty much uh, what's being consumed right now. Well, also the garage lights where I'm at, but this would be representative of what it would be doing overnight, which is what I designed this around was to provide power overnight for the refrigerators, the aquariums, and the furnace. So I have tested the furnace with the furnace uh, that added about another three or four hundred watts as I recall so so I just turned on the microwave which is about a thousand watts and we see that it is now providing uh, 12.4 volts and 2.13 kilowatts so it's about so it is about 2,000 watts the inverter fans are on, but still, um, the battery is nearly 100% charged. Uh, there is a draw on it of 82 amps. I think the microwave just kicked off. Yes, it just kicked off, and now we're back down to 600 watts. And 760 watts. So, okay, so here's a fun fact with the um, inverter turned off and the battery fully charged. And battery fully charged. What are the charge controllers doing? Because they're still hooked up to the panels. And we see that one's. Putting out 2.7 amps. That one's putting out basically zero. Basically zero. And almost zero. So that much all works. All seems to work. Yay. <laughs>